Alright, in this video we're going to talk about our first inferential statistic, which is correlational analysis. Of correlational research design, we talked about earlier this semester, was when researchers wanted to look at relationships amongst variables. And that's the design. This, there are a number of different statistics that fall under a correlational research design, but the primary one is a correlational statistic or a correlation. So the idea here is we're looking to see how do two variables, such as heart rate and VO2 max, which is maximum oxygen consumption in physiology to measure of fitness, how do these two things relate? So if we look at your max VO2, and if we looked at, for instance, something like your max heart rate, there should be inverse relationship. The more fit you are, the lower your maximum heart rate is. So this overlap is signifying the extent to which these two variables relate. Other examples could be, what do we have here? Measuring the relationship between anxiety and performance when taking an exam. Measuring the relationship between salary and dollars and level of stress of the employees. Measuring the relationship between weight and the amount of lower back pain. One of the things you should notice as we talk about this is that all of the variables I've identified in all of our examples are at least ordinal. That means they have to have at least ranking. There is no groups or nominal level of measurement variables in correlational research designs or correlational analyses. Again, keep in mind, the researcher does not select the research design, but we, instead they answer a question like, uh, can, you know, what's the relationship between anxiety and performance when taking a test, and then they follow it up by choosing the appropriate design to answer your question. Now, a couple of things. When you calculate a correlation, what you are going to get is what is called a correlation coefficient. In correlations, variables, um, we're going to talk a little bit about that correlation coefficient right now. In correlation, variables aren't usually identified as independent and dependent variables because our goal here is not to look for cause and effect, but instead to examine one relationship that is mutually shared between the variables. So instead, what you would normally think of as your independent variable, we're going to call a predictor. And what you would normally think of as your dependent variable, you're going to call a criterion. Um, generally, what we know is that in, or in correlation, causation cannot be implied. You can only find causation from true experimental studies. You cannot f have cause and effect with correlational studies. So if we want to think about predictor and criterion, what I could look at is see, okay, does my fitness level, as presented by VO2 max, which we showed on the previous slide, predict my resting heart rate? And those would be the correlation we'd expect. You know, so our predictor would be fitness as measured or operationally defined as VO2 max, and my criterion would be resting heart rate. Correlation coefficients can only measure linear relationships. This is a really key point, and I would just make sure that you really spend time going over this point. Other types of relationships, such as curvilinear relationships, and we see these a lot in psychology, cannot be assessed well at all during correlation, and we'll cover that in the next video as well. Finally, a correlation has two components, strength and direction, and we are going to cover those in the next slides. Correlation coefficients range from a scale of zero, or of negative one, excuse me, to positive one. So if I move this up and out of the way, I'll do a little drawing for you. If I have a distribution, it ranges from negative one to positive one, where a score of zero is indicative of a of no linear relationship. This closer the score is to one, either positive or never negative, that's going to indicate a stronger relationship. So the closer or the higher the absolute value of the score, positive or negative, the gr the stronger the relationship. The closer to the zero is going to be a weaker nonlinear relationship. To follow up with my previous point, a zero correlation does not indicate no relationship because it does not rule out a curvilinear relationship. 
Remember, correlation can only measure linear relationships. A correlation of zero only rules out a linear relationship. So where the strength of the relationship is based on the absolute value, the direction of the correlation is indicated by the sign. So a positive correlation is indicated by a positive sign, suggesting that as one variable increases, another variable will also increase. So as x increases, y will also increase. In comparison, a negative relationship is indicated by a negative sign, whereas one variable increases, the other variable will decrease. Many variables create negative relationships just because of the way they're scored. For example, time will create a negative relationship with most of the variables simply because a lower time is suggestive of better performance. So if I wanted to say, or look at the relationship between the number of hours that I or prepared for a race and then my time in the race, as the number of hours of practice increased, my time in the race hopefully would go down, suggesting a negative relationship. And here is a nice visual of a couple of different types of relationships, and I'll make them nice and big. So what we have here in the first one is a perfect positive relationship, where you see a one-to-one, -one, each one increases, as x increases, y increases at the same level. These lines that are drawn in are done mostly for the visual in correlation. They're not so much interpretable in correlation. The lines are the lines are actually used in different analysis called regression, which also falls under a correlational research design, but is not a correlational statistic in and of itself. As we move down, a strong positive correlation would be something like a, an R of 0.9, where you see it's not exactly 0.1 to 1. They're not going up straight line, but they are pretty closely linked together. Here we see a negative, our perfect negative relationship, and then strong negative relationship of 0.9, negative 0.9, excuse me. If we move over into this slide, we can see some other types of relationships here where now you can see them a little bit more spread apart, but we still have a moderately positive relationship at 0.7. Here we can see a lot of spread apart, really an R that's close to zero, so um, or essentially saying that X and Y aren't related whatsoever, at least from a linear perspective. Here we have a moderate negative relationship where you can see that as X increases, Y decreases, but they're pretty spread out. And here again, the R equals zero, but we have a curvilinear relationship. It just the correlation itself cannot assess the curvilinear relationship. All right, so move on. Or what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to post on the form right now for. Um, examples in your area of one positive and one negative relationship and then move on to the other video.